You brought the money? How much? Five thousand. And another five to come when you've established contact. Only ten thousand I'm being offered? Fifteen if it all goes well. Only ten guaranteed. I'm doing this whole damn job for you. Without me, nothing happens. I'm your only contact with him. Do you know how you're going to make contact with him? I mean, do you have his office telephone number, or does he expect you to ring him at home? Do you ask the wives of all your friends to do this sort of thing for you? You enjoy doing it. Yeah. Perhaps Harry Stinnes is a more interesting man than I usually meet. We need to know a lot more about him. His private life, marriage, children, and his wife. And we need a home address. So you can send someone over there. You are not sending Werner. He's been closed out of these. And eventually we need another rendezvous. He'll only talk in Mexico. Berlin frightens him. Your Berlin frightens me. I'm not having your Frank Harrington masterminding my every move. I will not put anything to him without terms. Terms have to be a direct negotiation. I've told you he won't meet you in Berlin. You seem to meet him easily enough. Girlfriends. I can't explain. Top that he can. Men attract different attention. Is that the game you're playing? Girlfriends? You are paying me to do a job. The way I do it is up to me. And secrets to me. Ever been to a sex club in Berlin, Bernie? Be Werner. Was sagst du? Have you ever been to a sex club in Berlin to watch your wife play games with someone else and get excited by the game, Bernie? Listen. Screw your head together, Bernie. Must be careful. I don't want you taking risks over there. She got excited by the dangers, and he got excited with her excitement. And now they're both excited by each other. Lovely scene, Bernie, lovely scene. No heroics. Anna. Are you listening to me? He took her back to his hotel. If they suspect anything, they'll be watching his house. She went with him, Bernie, and got bloody angry when the whole seduction was interrupted. How does that make me feel? I was on my way into the hotel to stop the whole thing. If your West Indian nurse hadn't done it for me... My what? You changed from Red Hot Lover back into Major Stinnes KGB without blinking an eye. He had her out of that hotel lobby before her coat was back on. What? West Indian nurse. Nah. <laughs> now you're listening to me. I think it was Fiona's black matron. The hypodermic. Which Dennis? I'm not happy with this game, Bernie. Really. I need a drink before I go. Right. And frightened. 
makes it feel different. Being paid by you a lot again for going over. I just hope your wife's not waiting for me on the other side. She knew damn well you wouldn't report seeing her. Another one? Maybe. They'll find out, Bernie. They always do. Maybe by guesswork. But sooner or later, London Central is going to know Fiona flew into Heathrow for three hours. And that you were brought there to see her. Then they'll find Mackenzie. Or what's left of him by then. for bridge. So I talk to can go to bed. Well, maybe I want to go to bed. Ah. No, 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 no. I have an English friend to cheer you up. Come on. I was told I'd probably find you here. A chap called Harrington says that you know more about this extraordinary town than anybody else. Lothar, was hast du inzwischen alles angestellt? Nicht, bin noch immer am Leben. I thought you worked in Mexico. So did I. But when you worked in the diplomatic service for a few years, you soon realized the chap that you last saw during the Korean language course in Seoul will next be found working as information officer at the embassy in Paris. Some guru in the personnel department obviously decided that my schoolboy German was just what was needed to be attached to you chaps for an undecided amount of time. No explanations, no apologies, no time to get ready, just wham, bam, and here I am. No bit, I think. Three spades. No bit. Liesl has unhappy cards. Six no trumps. Da schon provokat. I don't doubt it. wanted to put me into the Steigenberger or the Kempinski, but your chap Harrington said that this was the place to stay if I wanted to get a, a really proper feel of Berlin. I suppose you were here for some sort of cloak and dagger job, are you, with Dickie Cryer? Wrong twice. <clears throat> Dickie's safely tucked up in bed at home, and I'm here to collect a bag of documents. Courier's job. Short of people. No, really. I bet there's some poor double out there cutting his way through the barbed wire with the KGB Doberman sniffing his tail. Have some more brandy, Samson. I hear you're a bit of a drinker. It's 
magical kish. Kish wasser. Very clean drink. What exactly are you doing here? Oh, the writing of some interminable report, proving how dangerous the Russians are, so that the MOD can get increased expenditure before the next budget review. This chap, Gorbachev, keeps all smiling on British television and saying he's only got our best intentions at heart. And the public at home think we're spending our money on the wrong things. You're trying to lead me on, aren't you? What was it that chap said? Agent provocateur. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me drunk, aren't you? No chance, old man. Drink you under the table any time. I'm not trying to get you drunk. It's the less you drink, the more there is for me. You really think you're quite a drinker, don't you? Oh, come on, then. Let's have another bottle of this clean vasa, as you call it. No, no, it's all right, it's all right. You put it down on my account. I think we've both had enough, Henry. I know your sort. I'll see you in the morning. You won't get away with it, you know. Get away with what? You know, Samson. Don't play the bloody innocent with me. You know. Good night, Mr. Bloody Samson. to want to meet. There's not many of you West Berliners like coming out here. You feel your city ends with the neon lights fade out. You shouldn't have sent him. Would you rather have gone in his place? She's having stinners. Followed every move he makes. Who, oh, his wife? Your wife. He returns to Mexico next week. And I do not believe he will even consider your terms. I have not him any terms. The psychology of the factory is not a quarter of a million dollars or a two-bedroom house. Very good, Mrs. Volkman. His words, not mine. Where did he get his figures from? That is what London has offered him. Who made this offer? I made it. With whose authority? Frank Harrington. And your Mr. Rensselaer. They also told me you have my second 5,000 to pay me. Oh, 
all this about, Frank? I'm supposed to be file officer in this tennis game, and now I find your girlfriend making offers I know nothing about. That was uncalled for, Bernard. Well, how the hell do you think he's going to react? Not everyone in London I trust you to pursue this defection with total enthusiasm. Is that what all this is about? Just a little chat, where no one can hear us. About what? The snoop that you sent round to Liesel's the other night to fill me full of drink and give it a talk? How do you know he's trying to make me talk? Oh, he gave me a lot of foreign office hogwash, but I'd say it was internal security. I believe he is, yes. Does that mean I'm being investigated? We all get investigated from time to time. And you do have something of an outstanding problem. You mean a wife who defected? A wife who got away. else cropped up. Apparently he used to work for you sometimes. London have been asking whether you knew anything about his death. Seems he'd been dead some time when they found him. These questions part of an official inquiry? We'd be out here if they were. Was he working for you? Tiptree bring you these photos. This Mackenzie was found dead in one of her own safe houses. People might think he'd been killed by someone on our side. You mustn't be angry at me, Bernard, for asking these questions. It's not easy for me. All I'm trying to suggest is, it's not the time to conceal any evidence you might have. If you have any doubts about how things may turn out for you, now will be the time to disappear. You mean defect? Call it what you like. You walk through Checkpoint Charlie and disappear. That's what you want, isn't it, Frank? Oh, Jesus, but I don't know what I want you to do. It all depends on who you are. Who I am? Someone's told you that I'm a Soviet agent. That's it, isn't it? You think I'm a Soviet agent and you're offering me a way out. on every damn checkpoint. I had to find a way out through Potsdam. Did you get anywhere near Stinnis? He had more guards around him than your children. I found his wife instead. What's she like? Everything about him fascinates you. It's professional curiosity. We need to know that's all. You identify with him. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Did you know he was born the same month and year as you? and that he spent most of his childhood in Berlin because his father was stationed here? Where do they live? Out in the country, the Neuchen. Northeast of the city, the last station on the S-Bahn. I pretended I was doing a public transport survey. You lunatic, you've got West Berlin papers! Supposing she'd call the police to check your credentials. She wasn't going to call anyone. She wouldn't have answered the door if I hadn't caught her in the garden. Half of her face was black and blue. Told me she had fallen over. You could see the fist mark. Stennis beats his wife? The neighbor said so. It's quite usual for them to crawl. And he runs around with other women. I can vouch for that myself. Thanks to you. Zena's doing a job, that's all. I hope you're right. She seems to enjoy too much for a job. I think they are going to split up. The son had left home. They have nothing to stay together for. Except office rules and regulations. KGB like happy families. I asked her what her husband did. What was his daily journey on the S-Bahn? She said, he is an embassy official, Russian. 
I said I thought Russians have chauffeurs to drive them to work. That set her off about how it's being passed over for promotion. Second motive. Fed up with his wife, fed up with his job. It's all too neat. Suppose the KGB set all this up as a cover story. Giving her a black eye. On the off chance, I went knocking at the door. Ah. How do I know Fiona's not second-guessing every move I make, huh? How do I know she's not planting stinners? That's not the way it feels anymore. London and negotiating with stinners through Frank Harrington and Zinn. Shows how much they trust me. And they found Mackenzie. And they're asking questions. What did I tell you? You break the rules, you dig yourself deeper and deeper in. Now they'll find out I was down there with you. Just when I'm working myself back with the department. Silesian. Silesian songs, Silesian food, Silesian nostalgia. Berlin is a dustbin for refugees. Zena's family is just the same. Big reunions to tell the old stories and remember the old farm. But Zena never saw any of that. Growing up with the stories is even worse. God, what a pair we ended up with. Zena in love with a past that never happened. Fiona in love with an ideology that never existed. Zena's a child, Bernie. That's why I love her so much. She believes in all the fairy stories. I don't want to lose her. I don't want her falling for Erich Stinnes. Listen, Werner, if she's falling for anything, it's the quarter of a million dollars London have offered him. Hello, Manchester. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, we get here. Ah, prima. I don't understand why you sent Werner into the East. I already know it all from Eric himself. Like the fact he beats his wife? I am your only contact with him. Things must be done as I say. How many times? Did you see Stinnes while I was over the wall? Once here, and once in the east. You went into the east? Are you crazy? Ari phoned to say he had two tickets for the opera. He seemed to know you were not at home. He sent a car. I was worried it might drive up to the door with the Russian army driver in uniform. <laughs> Or a hammer and stick a flag at the bonnet. <laughs> Erich Stinnes is not a polite and cultured gentleman. He likes to pretend he is. What if he'd held you hostage? Promises, promises. It's not funny. It could have happened. I can handle Eric Stinnes. I understand Eric better than you men will ever understand him. You should ask a woman to help, if you really want to understand a man like that. I understand him all right. Perhaps I understand him too well. They did know you were over there. Now, are you sure that you weren't tailed when you spoke to his wife? What difference would it make now? Whether we believe what she told you. She didn't fake a black eye, Bernie. It's 
Zena, did the students ever talk about his family? He complains about his wife. And the fact his son's left home. He just has the one. Nineteen years old. He's come back to his mother in Moscow. I'm sorry, he's what? The son's gone back to live with Ari's first wife. Perhaps you let me manage things my way now. How long ago was his first wife? They separated almost as soon as they had the child. The boy did his last two years at school in East Berlin. He got very good marks, but he couldn't get into university. Eric was furious. How furious? Very furious. It's hardly a motive to defect, is it? He won't see me here anymore. He feels very exposed. He's not the only one. He won't see me until he's back in Mexico. He will be there for five days to finish what he was doing. He said, whatever happens will have to happen out there and before the fifth day. Where have you been hiding? Everybody is searching for you. Frank Harrington, his driver, Mr. Tiptree. He's out in the city streets looking for you. Tell me, are you running away from something? Perhaps they think I'm a spy. They think that. Are you pulling my leg, Liebchen? <laughs> well, come on, let's have a drink to good old times. Instead of making bad new jokes. Berlin changes for you. Have ich recht? You are no longer easy here in your mind. Oh. Let's drink to the next time, huh? And the summer sun on the Wannsee. We'll have a picnic together. Like you used to with your wife and children. When did you know something was wrong? Did you know before it happened? Did you? After all, she lived here for five years. She carried your children. Yeah, I'm quarreled with you every single day. You must admit you never liked her. And I'll tell you why. In 30 years, she was the only person who ever complains to Liesel Hennig about her rooms. Well, everyone else was too frightened to complain. <laughs> well. That was like divorce, the fault was on both sides. If you are sad, Liebchen, then she has defeated you. Your life is worth more than the regrets she's left you with. Stimmt's? Da siehst du. Bloody time, too. Ah, Berlin's been out looking for you during the last 12 hours. A one-way ticket to Paris, Samson. A man called Paul Biederman was arrested at Charlie de Gaulle Airport last night. A 
arrested. What for? The unauthorized possession of classified material. They ran his name and his passport number through the computer and found that he had NATO protection. It appears that some bloody idiot in London had put a sacred tab on him without referring it to committee. The tab had your name on it. What exactly has this got to do with you, Tiptree? I mean, what particular hat are you wearing today? I only possess one hat. The FCO. Which sometimes doubles as internal security. Biedemann was arrested in France. France is not NATO. Thus, it becomes Foreign Office Liaison. Me. The French don't usually cooperate on NATO matters. And they are this time. They're keeping him at the airport until we can get one of our chaps out there to check him out. I need hardly say you better take it pretty carefully with the French. They're under no obligation to hand him over, or indeed to give you access. Toujours à la politesse. That's what I always say, Samson. No. We thought we should talk to you first. And meet the head. Oh, the coat. Hang your coat on the camera and turn on the ventilator if you don't want me to listen. Everything you told me to do. Low profile, being careful. Shh. So, Paul, what's all this business about you carrying submarine specifications? I never saw it before in my life. What do I know about submarines? For Christ's sake, if the Russians want information like that, they don't go to an amateur. Flying, Paul. Rome. Mm -hmm. Why were you in Paris? Business. A currency transfer through a French merchant bank. All perfectly legal. You arrived in Paris yesterday. Yes. Who knew you were coming? The bank. No one else. What did you see in Mexico? Moskvin. You want to watch out for him. He is an evil bastard, that Moshkin, I tell you. Hmm. So, Paul, how did these papers come to find their way into your briefcase? It's not my briefcase. I came to the airport in a taxi and went to the Alitalia desk. A man came running up, pushed the case in my hands and said I left it in the taxi. And off he went. And in these days, you don't fool around in airports with baggage you don't know. So I called to the girl on the desk to ring the police. Two seconds later, I was arrested. What's going on, Ben? Can you get me out of here, please? Say, was it your people who found 
forced the case on me, a way to get me to work for you. Oh, oh dear. Don't be stupid, Paul. German desk London wouldn't have the faintest idea what to do with you. Except take your credit cards out to lunch. But why would the Russians do it? Why, indeed. But I wouldn't forget if you get me out of here. Don't worry, Paul. With the kind of bank balance you've got, neither would I. Excuse me. Can you let me out, please? Avec les compliments de commissaire Nicole. Sorry? Pour Monsieur Biderman. Non, mais ça, mon petit vieux, on en a rien à foutre. Hein. On est quand même chez nous, non Bon, on reprend la liste alors. J'en étais. Ouais. Non, la... Yann Dedé. Non, le prénom, c'est Yann. Voilà. Breton. Yvonne, André, Noémie, deux fois, Dedé, Désiré, Étienne, Désiré, Émile, Théodore. Après Pascal Marty, là c'est des histoires de Corse, il y a Dominique Sampiri, Pascal Marty avec un I à la fin avec... Bon, on les met tous les deux dans un GT et vous demandez au central le 54 AM 15 23. Je vous rappelle aussi pour Anne-Christine Ballereau. Oui. Et sa copine Julie Lam Entrez Julie Lamour et la MOER. Ah, ça vous rappelle quelque chose, ben moi aussi. Bon. Ça n'a rien à voir. Ça n'a rien à voir. Did you make your conclusion already? The briefcase was clearly planted. Why so clearly? Une seconde. I know Paul. He spent most of his life lying. It becomes painfully obvious when he actually tells the truth. Bon, je vous rappelle tout à l'heure, j'ai quelqu'un là. Planted by a woman, for what reason? For all I know, to embarrass the French authorities in some way. Oh, would you like maybe another coffee? Here's a gold creme, like you just sent your prisoner. What are you talking about? Well, the plate you sent down a... Just a few papers to sign. French Embassy would like a written statement to say that your friend, Mr. Biederman, didn't die as a result of French police brutality. And they also require your voluntary assent to attend a post-mortem, should it become necessary. And we'd like a chronology of the facts for our own files. So if you'd like to confirm that Mr. Biederman died from poison in a cup of coffee given to him by you, For the record.
Mein Gott. Bad news travels fast. You are a bloody fool. Twice you break the rules. Now you wonder why they throw the book at you. Except this time someone set me up. Fiona, why should she play such an elaborate game? To discredit you? Why not just knock you off? Perhaps my wife had scruples about killing the father of her children. Besides, Fiona never could resist an intellectual challenge. Like you. Except I know when I'm beaten. Well, thanks a lot. My wife's been playing the come on game with Stinners in Mexico and Berlin for you. And now you say you're beaten? Where is Zena? Waiting in the airport. She didn't fancy meeting you. So you're on your way then? Flight out in two hours. Tomorrow we are back in Mexico with Stinners. Get it in your thick head. I'm going for Stinnis. And you better be right there behind me. And when Stinnis wants to bargain, you better have some answers. Otherwise, old friend, take Frank's advice. If you are a Russian agent, now's the time to walk. Do you think she was ever genuine, Liebchen? Uncle Silas said you'd just come back from doing something very dangerous. Well, that sort of thing is very dangerous when something goes wrong. You could say that about everything. Good. Uncle Silas said you'd be feeling like you'd been on the High in perception. gave Biedemann a sacred tab. It was a means of cover in case we needed him as an approach to Stinnes. Why didn't you clear it through committee? I was only here for a few days. The committee meets once a month if it's lucky. Now you tell us Biedemann was a KGB agent himself. Is that why you tabbed him? He was hardly an agent. He was used for finance, maybe courier work. I dare say they used his house in Mexico and his boat. He was a very small piece of the KGB machinery. He was carrying secrets. That was a very crude plant. Generalized material covering a whole lot of NATO countries and the third world countries. The secrets were important enough for him to be killed. He was killed to incriminate me. That's how expendable he was. That doesn't change the fact that it was your cup of coffee that killed him. I think if the French had any doubts about that, they wouldn't have let me go. Another theory is that Biedemann was about to blow the whistle on you, and that left you no alternative. Look, we could go on picking stories out of a hat all day, trying to figure out Biedemann's role in all of this, instead of acknowledging that there's someone in East Berlin laughing at the script she herself has written for this meeting. Fiona. Come on, brother, that's absurd. Oh, I don't know. I think we'd be delighted to have the KGB floundering around like this, trying to find out who's on which side. We're not floundering. We're examining permutations. Thank you, Mr. Tiptree. Your wife was a KGB agent passing information to Moscow. The questions we want to ask Stinnis concern your role in that operation. There are some people in this building who have always thought that you and Fiona were working together as a team and that you yourself tipped her off in good enough time for her to get out. But when she ran, I was already in East Berlin. Why would I bother to come back and put my head in the noose? That's the cunning of it. What guilty man would come running back to the department he'd betrayed? It's the most ingenious defense you could have contrived. And what's more, Bernard? It's very you. Very me? Steady on, Brett. Hypothesis. Double bluff. 
You're one of the very few people who could carry it off. You're cool, Bernard. Very cool. Even today. You can invent some wonderful plots, Brett. But you're overlooking the fact that I was the one who flushed my wife out in the first place. She was a burned out case. She'd run her course. Moscow said, bring her home and told you to blow the whistle on her. Which makes you golden boy back here in London Central. Well placed to carry on her good work. Well, since my duplicity was so bloody obvious, why wasn't I arrested as soon as I got back here? Insufficient evidence. We wanted to see what you'd do about enrolling Stinnis. Give you the rope to hang yourself. Hypothesis. Right, Dickie? I've always said there was insufficient evidence justify any action against Bernard. I want to make that quite clear to everyone around this table. I mean, according to your scenario, Brett, if Bernard doesn't manage to turn Stinnis, then that proves his guilt. Positively medieval. Throw the accused into a lake, and if he comes up, he's guilty, so you execute him. Wonderful. Would it be accurate to say that you suggest that Fiona or the KGB or both intend to feed us Stinnis as a disinformation plant? I doubt if he would sustain a prolonged interrogation. I believe the first motive was and still is to get me to run. Run? Run where? Moscow, Brett. That sounds like a piece of fancy Samson footwork to me. I disagree. It'd be worth a lot of them to have Bernard there, asking for political asylum. I think we have to take into account the way Bernard stayed here and faced the music. Uh, speaking as director of establishment in this office, I'd say he had precious little alternative. I happen to know he had several opportunities this last month to make a run for it, I so wished. Speaking, that is, as Berlin resident in Berlin. So, according to you, this whole shambles is an elaborate plot by Fiona to entice you back to the conjugal bed in Berlin or Moscow. Couldn't that be just your wishful thinking? Or maybe even your paranoia? I'm not paranoid, Brett. I'm being persecuted. Persecuted? It's a joke, Brett. A very old Anglo-Saxon joke. <laughs> Well, it's not so much a question of conjugal bed. I mean, if Bernard scarpers, he'll take the kids. That's the whole point, isn't it? You know how desperate she is to get them back. And just as we know only too well how much we're having to pay for their protection. Can I ask, Bernard, has Fiona been in direct touch with you? Or are you with her? She rang the children. That incident was reported. We're interested in unreported incidents. Last Saturday, you were approached outside your house by a West Indian nurse. When a car tried to follow you with the nurse, uh, two other vehicles deliberately balked it at Chalk Farm Lights. Oh, I'd hate to think of the times I've been carved up deliberately on Haverstock Hill of a Saturday morning. Mm. Now, who was the nurse? A neighbor. He had a friend working at the airport. Someone who was prepared to help out with the children. She was taking me to meet her. Perhaps you'd let me have some names. Whatever form it has taken, this was meant to be a departmental meeting. I shall object very strongly if it turns into a cross-examination in its present form. I go along with that. Bernard is a member of my staff. There are certain procedures to go through. If anyone's making other than hypothetical accusations, is there in your mind any connection between what we've been discussing so far and the death of Julian Mackenzie? What was he doing for you at the time of his death? I 
I don't know the time of his death. I understand you gave this Mackenzie quite a few jobs to do in the field. There were more errands than jobs. Not like you? Do you use a probationer? Yes, you're the one who's always complaining about the lack of experience. You're the one who won't tolerate amateurism. He was keen. He didn't mind using his spare time without expecting any extra payment for it. He'd stand in the rain all bloody night without asking any questions about the premises he was supposed to be watching. Go down the municipal offices, spend hours rummaging around in boxes of old birth certificates and voters' papers. And because he was particularly rude and badly dressed, he had no trouble in persuading anybody that he worked as a reporter in one of our great national newspapers. That's why I used him. And that's why I liked him. But you've no idea what he was doing in one of the department's safe houses. Oh, we all know what he's doing. It's lying there dead for seven days before some member of our highly paid housekeeping department even bothered to check the premises. Yeah, well, they've been shafted. We'll have no more trouble from those lazy sons of bitches. Oh, that'll be a great comfort to me the next time I'm in a safe house and sit in a chair so that some KGB hood can stick a 44 Magnum in the back of my neck. How do you know what kind of weapon it was? Not to say the way it was used. I told him. In Berlin. And I repeat again, this is not meant to be a murder trial. No one's trying to blame you for Mackenzie's death, Bernard. Just Biedermann's. Well, that's nice to know. We're simply trying to get at the truth. I'll try this one on for size. Suppose my slow and careful way of enrolling Stinnies is the best way. Suppose there are some members of the department here in London who would like to see my attempt end in failure. So they hurry headlong into rape when we're talking about seduction throwing quarter of a million dollar offers at Stinnis to scare the trousers off him, or because they'd rather he stayed his side of the wire. Let me hear that again. You heard me, Brett. If Stinnis goes into the debriefing center as I want him, relaxed and cooperative, he'll sing. Apart from anything else, he'll sing about every screwed up mission we've tried to put together over the last 10 years. And that could mean a lot of egg yolk and a lot of faces all the way around London Central. You include me in that sweeping statement? I don't know, Brett. Consult your analyst. I deal in facts. Don't you talk to me like that! I'll talk to you anyway, I want buddy boy! I'm the file officer on the Stinnis investigation, unless anyone's contesting that. You may have given me a couple of minders and rigged this kangaroo court to intimidate me, but I hold power of attorney on that file until the DG himself withdraws it. I've been on the other side of that wall, Brett, where intimidation is done by experts, so you don't frighten me one itsy little bit. And if this pantomime has been staged, to make me abandon the Stinnis investigation, then all I can say is it's been a colossal waste of time and money. Because I intend to gather Mr. Stinnis for you, to bring him back to London, and to make him sing like a red canary. Now, gentlemen, I have a previous appointment with the Director General and a travel warrant for him to sign to Mexico. And if anybody wants to change his mind, then I suggest he walks out of that door ahead of me. <laughs> Make too many enemies, laddie. I said what needed saying. He said it very well. Brett went home to change his underwear. Oh, that'll be the day. <laughs>
You're inclined to the overkill. Is that a warning? Advice. Fatherly advice. Not to guard my tongue. No. I enjoyed the way you scared them half to death in there. They know how easily you can make fools of them. Brett never forgave the way you described his visit to Berlin. <laughs> Check boy Charlie. Did he really sneak a peep over the wall, hiding behind a party of tourists? <laughs> he saw an East German border guard looking at him through a pair of binoculars. <laughs> and he turned round so bloody fast he fell down the steps. <laughs> I promise you. One at a time, Bernard. You can't antagonize a whole room full of people. Sooner or later, they'll gang up on you. Everything's very quiet today. No one around. Thought it was Sunday. Departmental meeting, sir. Someone in trouble, I suppose. Better now, is it? Clearly, yes. Sir. Precisely. That's what meetings are for. Ah, you're going to Mexico about this Russian. Trouble warrant for your signature, sir. Uh, is this, um, Stinnis worth the trouble? Wasn't he your idea in the first place? I want to know what you think. Not those desk jockeys in there. If he's genuine. He's the biggest and best affection we've ever had. It must occur to you from time to time, Samson, that you'd be just as useful to them. We need to score, you know. No more near misses. Thank you, sir. Did you see this uh, Mackenzie body? We don't always put everything into the report, do we? I'm afraid we can't go home just yet because I've got to go away again. See, Mummy? No. Doris is shopping. She left her gun at home. You can always tell she's fat here and she <laughs> carries it. You are. Mummy doesn't telephone anymore. When can we go home? Next week. Where are you going? Mexico for exactly five days. Race you down the hill. Give you three seconds. One, two. Hello. Come on, Bernie. <laughs> Silas was looking for you. He wanted a chat, but not in the office. He's at our new flat with George. Uh, I'm afraid, darling, George is convinced that you and I are having a passionate affair. What? You must have caught my wishful thinking. George a pretty penny in this place. I gather you're meant to be renting or buying something yourself. 
a bed sit without the children? Tessa told me. Tessa should keep a pretty little mouth shut. <coughs> Remarkable pair of sisters. One with the KGB, one by all accounts, sleeping her way through Whitehall. They really were good girls, though. You're out on a limb, Bernard. I can't do much to help you in London office. DG has backed you so far. You'll cut off your arms and legs if he even begins to think he's wrong. Best you don't encourage such thoughts. After 30 years, even you're not sure, are you, Silas? After 30 years, I thought I knew Fiona. I still believe I do know you. Don't isolate yourself. The human race may not seem very dignified, but you'll need one or two of us before you're through. Quite a place you got here, George. Don't you start. I get enough of this from our mutual father-in-law. Please. He's after you, Bernie. He wants your children. Tessa wants a white carpet in here. Oh, that'll be very elegant. Look, I do have to say how grateful I am to Tess for watching the kids while I'm away. It's very good of you to let her. She doesn't ask, Bernie. I just assume she's looking after your children when she's not at home. Well, she, she really has been a great help since Fiona left. But I wouldn't want you to get the wrong idea, George. The wrong idea, Bernie? What would be the wrong idea? sleeping with your wife, George. And I have no plans to try. That's all Tessa drinks these days. She's costing me a couple of hundred quid a week in bubbly. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers, George. Feeling is dire, I suppose, Bernie. What else would they do with a woman that's so consistently unfaithful? It's not as if she's ever attempted to hide it. You see, the trouble with being a Catholic is you can't admit a mistake and change your mind. No, I'm... Tessa loves you, George. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that she always has. She's a damn funny way of showing it. <laughs> Let's face it, we're both in a bit of a aren't we? <laughs> Our mutual father-in-law. He seems to think it's your fault Fiona skipped it. I imagine instead she'd planned it ever since she climbed out of the cradle and saw him standing there. <laughs> <sighs> Did you see that pink Rolls Royce outside? Yeah. I'm delivering that later this evening. £70,000 worth of motor car. My markup's 15,000 pounds. It's obscene. As it goes, it's time you had another car, Bernie. Something with a little oomph. I'll keep my eye open for you. Thanks, George. But no markup. No. No markup.
every time I come home, I find someone different on my doorstep. I brought your tickets and your travel money. Why didn't they send a messenger? Because I wanted to come myself. Would you like a drink now you're here? Uh, yes, yes, thanks very much. It's a very early flight, I'm afraid. I could drive you to the airport. I've told my parents I won't be coming home tonight. I expect I could fit into one of your children's beds. I wouldn't be any trouble. Oh. <laughs> you think? It's not a joke, I promise you. I'm still waiting for the pair fly. It's a kiss off, not a pale. People are saying you're not going to come back. That something's going to go wrong and you're going to get killed in Mexico. And I want you to come back. Yes, ma'am, you go. Hello. Stinnes has five days, Bernie. You have already lost us two of them. Must be something about this city that saps one's sense of energy. Did you find me a gun? This is Mexico, not Berlin. It's not my backyard. Just a stick to wave around? Hmm? don't feel comfortable about all of this, huh? You feel something is wrong. So do you. Stinnes keeps asking where you are. He only has three days left. I don't want him feeling too cozy. Zena, see him yet? All day, every day. She's waiting for you. He accepts 250,000 as the final price. But he wishes to remind you of one Russian defector who sold out to the Americans, a man with a first class brain, who ended up running a laundrette. Stennis wants a laundrette. Erich won't actually move without you because he feels very exposed. We all feel exposed, Jena. Because you still don't believe him? Perhaps you should try to understand that he is not wanting to come over because he likes the idea of living in the West. It is because he can no longer stand to live in the East. He needs to know what a way of life he will have. The money is a sign to show that London is serious. Then he will talk to us on his own chosen ground. I'll meet Stennis wherever he wants, but alone. Just him and myself. The money is to be handed over in a twins, in cash. If there is no money, he won't even meet with you. Well, what does he intend doing with a suitcase full of pound notes in the middle of Mexico City? American dollars, that is what he's asked for. In used hundred dollar bills. Gold sovereigns, lotties, 
Shark's teeth, cowrie shells, what's the difference? He's flying to England. He'll have a letter of credit and a bank account waiting for him. I think he wants to put it somewhere where no one can get their hands on it. I think he intends to give it to someone he trusts here in Mexico. He gives his money to someone he trusts, and yet he's prepared to give his body to somebody he doesn't trust. I don't understand. You wouldn't, would you? You have no faith in anyone or anything since your wife left you. She doesn't like to be left out. I want to see Stennis face to face. But alone. Okay? I don't even want you there, Ben. He's nervous. He's being watched. Zena seems to get to see him without any trouble. Girlfriends don't seem to matter so much. Isn't that why you are using her? Yes, my lieber fr God, this is a, looks like something Billy the Kid was playing with a hundred years ago. Well, what sort of these? Look, I mean... <laughs> Zena's infatuated with the same. Wrong. There's only one thing Zena's infatuated with, and Herr Stinnis is about to take delivery of a quarter of a million of them. Your view of love is very cynical. I would do anything for her. She'd like the crown jewels, Werner. She gives me more than she takes from me, Bernie. Another man is not a real betrayal. You mean it's just misery and humiliation? Fiona didn't leave you for another man. No, to be betrayed for an ideology is worse, though, isn't it? Where were, where were our feelings? Emotions seem so bloody real. It was all just a piece of theatre. Twelve yard. I don't believe she had to invent the way she felt about you and the children. Perhaps kids is what Zena needs. You always make it seem as though you despise her. And she's trying to help you. I don't despise her. She frightens me. And you don't see why she frightens me, which frightens me even more. She's an amateur, and amateurs keep their eyes on the targets instead of looking over their shoulders. It's going to be you and me out there in the firing line, brother. Going for a man I'm not sure of in a country I'm lost in. It's like you say. Mexico City's not our backyard. We do not know the ground rules here. This isn't going to help much, is it? So you need to go doctor. Can I so again?
in order? Nothing wrong, I hope. Or did you try to unsettle me with your two days' silence? Jet lag, Mr. Stinnis. We're told never to negotiate under the influence. This is still a negotiation. Oh, depends what game you're playing. What games are there? There's a Moscow game, where you leave me by the nose and then turn around and say no thanks. You will find a way to prevent me. I'm sure. That is your job. You got the money with you? No. Still negotiating. Oh, you and I haven't even started to negotiate yet. I asked for a job in one of your universities. Exactly is a job in university. I would like to teach Russian politics in Oxford. Oh, why Oxford? They always win the boat race. And perhaps there are people in Oxford that might attract the interest of your degrees. Is that meant to be some kind of an offer? <laughs> you haven't made one yourself yet. Well, I'm not sure that specific offers can be made in the two days left to us, apart from the money. You asked me to take a hell of a lot of trust. Let me into this, Samson. If I thought you were playing the fool with me, I would kill you. I can say the same. One Russian passport. In the names of Bernard, William and Sally Sampson. I know how she feels about her children. I did not find it very easy to say goodbye to my son this time in Berlin, knowing I might never see him again. The plan was abandoned on my orders. Hmm. Is this meant as another token of good faith? What about you talking of good faith? that it was at least expected. The money will be handled by a contact from the embassy. There will be a safe room for you to count it in. <laughs> you mean the husband of a defector is not trusted with the cash? We go direct from there to the airport. And no stopovers in other NATO countries? There is no American involvement. So, if anything goes wrong, it will be your fault. Ah, that is always the London game, Mr. Stinnis. The desk man's game, Samson. How many seats are booked in the airplane? Two, just you and myself. No one else.
Miss Fortman is meant to be traveling with me. Apparently, your people in London agreed. Well, I haven't agreed, and it's my operation. We are very close. We intend to be together. <laughs> as far as I can see, Frau Falkman's chief interest lies in dollar bills. I enjoy women, Mr. Simpson. But I'm not stupid about them. <laughs> I'm not stupid about anything. I'm over 40. I'll not be ending up at General in Moscow with a car and a driver to take me home every night. But you are not convinced what you're doing. Two people are dead, Mr. Stillis. I don't intend to complete the hat trick. Moscow believes your wife is protecting you. What do you believe? I don't believe anything. Listen, Stillis. You will be unarmed tomorrow. And I'll kill you if I even see a KGB man, whichever side you're on. You were more nervous than last time. You were going to need my cooperation, you know. One raised eyebrow from me, and they could begin to suspect you are Moscow's man. What the hell are you doing here? I'm your contact from the embassy. A quarter of a million in used hundred dollar bills. Jesus. Well, what have you dragged me all the way out here for? Because it's discreet. Were you followed? And of course I'm not being followed. I'm not working against you, you know. Look, you must understand that the success of this operation will be measured by whether or not we get our man to London. Nothing else counts. that life and death. Very philosophical. I can assure you, you get philosophical after London Central screw up for you a few times. London Central has confirmed that I have overall charge of this operation and sole responsibility for the money. Now, you have come to an arrangement with Stinnis and I have to know about it. Takuba. And where precisely in Takuba? At Takaria by the metro. Thank you, Samson.
you were late. Exactly checkpoint Charlie, is it? You don't seriously think Stennis is going to walk into this rat trap, do you? It's a perfectly respectable money exchanger's office. I've been in Mexico a long time, Samson. Believe me, I do know how to get things done. Let's make a start before Stinnis gets here. Mrs. Balkman is his representative. You seriously believe he's just going to walk in here? The arrangement has been made. He knows the money's here. Who the hell are they? 
Your lot, I suppose. I didn't even know we were coming here, remember? Hands on him! Rookie beer! They come for Stinnis. I imagine they'll shoot him, and she'll take the money. Is that the trade-off? Poor Vern. You said you would not be hurt. Where is she? Bloody near, he got us all killed. Where do you think? Barbara Mosman. Yes, thanks for the warning. You were ten minutes too late. I didn't know that it was in Mexico. It just seemed a possibility. Your lady friend reported everything back to him. I see. You were right about her. She did think you'd be safe. That was the bargain she made. Safe? And gulag. Zayna counted it before your friend arrived. Quarter of a million dollars, all present and correct. I'm not here for the money. Oh, take it anyway. I'm sure you'll have no trouble getting rid of it. Was she hurt? Zena? <laughs> It'll take more than Moskvin to kill Frau Volkman. And Moskvin? He'll survive. He won't like that. And he won't forget it. You mean I should have killed him? Let's go. You really think of everything, don't you? I prepared for everything. Vamos. Moskvin's a desk man, isn't he? 
most people are. something in common. Nearly there, sir. One man brings you in, does the others ask the questions. Good to see you again, Governor. How are you? I'm great, never better. There we are. Pressure causes a debriefing. How long will the kid be here? Give them something good to chew on. You could be out in the big wide world by Christmas. Am I six or am I five? Six. We find you, we get first crack at you. There's a lot of very nervous desk men in London waiting to hear what you've got to say for yourself. Are you nervous? $250,000 in $100 bills. Perhaps you'd get it counted, sir. In the safe. Is this a passport you had at Heathrow? Bryce Norton. Temporary import license, if that's what you're looking for. Home office have to accept you. <laughs> it would be amusing if they classified me as an illegal immigrant and sent me back to Moscow. Mexico. Always sent back to previous point of departure. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. There's a... Uh... A health form here that I'll have to be filled in. They'll be wanting it before dinner time. I mean, there's no point in wasting money on custard pies if you turn out to be a diabetic. Would you just like to follow me, sir? You have to sign the papers, Mr. Sampson. Smoked salmon and stilton. Yeah. As I understand it, everything that goes on in these four walls is your responsibility. It was hard work getting him here. Now he needs a little care and attention. He is a Russian. We're trying to seduce him, Mr. Barnes. And I sincerely hope you haven't left a Gideon Bible in his bedroom. You have to sign the papers. Bit of a bloody mess, wasn't it? I mean, Henry could have been seriously hurt. I could have been seriously hurt. Zena was seriously hurt. 
Oh, people think it's a cushy number in here, don't they? Well, they should have Deputy Controller Parenthesis Europe breathing down their necks. And endless bloody meetings with every damn committee down both sides of Whitehall. I suppose like Daphne, you, you, you think it's all lunches at the Mirabel, don't you? Yes. Yes, well, I don't want it clearly understood down that corridor that I had absolutely nothing to do with the logistics of the operation in Mexico. As far as I am concerned, you were in charge. Pity you didn't tell that to your chum Tiptree. You could say we were trying him out. What else, a clown? How is your Mr. Stinnis? Ah, Mr. Stinnis, Dickie. Your Mr. Stinnis, Bernard. Disorientated. Isn't that always the fate of defectors? I'd like to keep an eye on his debrief on behalf of the German desk. Why? If they handle him wrongly, they'll get nothing out of him at all. And I think he's got lots to tell. That is exactly why I don't want my German desk to have anything at all to do with him. Not until we know what kind of dirt they're going to dig out of him. We've done our job. We've got hold of him. Now it's up to the debriefers. Oh, You're not to go anywhere near him, and that is an order. Bernard! And just remember, the DG doesn't like bad news in front of outsiders. Carry on. I persuaded the Mexico police to arrest the money changer for unlicensed premises, and then had Mrs. Volkman and the Russian carted off to a private clinic. I believe the embassy had to pay hush money. $50,000, not including the clinic and a very high-level apology that did not come easy. I think I should say that it was Samson who created the situation by using an unauthorized firearm. You shot this Soviet. Where? In the heel. Ha! Huh. And the Mexican with the machine pistol? Mrs. Volkman had already immobilized him, sir. The machine pistol was lying on the floor. Mr. Tiptree failed to pick it up. He probably didn't know how to use it. Where was Stinas? Oh, it was clear to me that he wouldn't risk the rendezvous. No one in their right mind would have walked up there, not in Stinas' position. No, it was a bad error of judgment made by somebody with no experience, appointed over my head, apparently with the sanction of someone here in London Central. Are you making an allegation? I'm telling you what happened. Your version of what happened. What other version is there? It seems to me that, um... Um... Tiptree, sir. Tiptree will correct his version of events and that it will be filed with, um... Samson's comments as a postscript. Who's in charge of the debrief? Uh, Beric House, initially, DG. Uh, within my sphere of influence. Whatever the hell that means. What the hell does it mean, Brett? It means... First call. Whatever the hell that means. Uh, which one of you is holding the file for the debriefers? Our consensus seems to suggest it's become a department file, not a German desk file. Department source material is Brett. I said first call. I can't agree. It's my direct responsibility. <laughs> Wonderful. I risk my ass bringing this Soviet back for you because London Central wants him so much and all you can do now he's here is play past the bloody parcel with him.
Welcome back to the monkey house. Hello, how are you? What are you doing, Bernard? <laughs> Bernie? I missed you. Can I see you? <laughs> Do you know, nobody seemed to know what was going on out there. And nobody would tell me either. Until the day before yesterday. Then what? <laughs> well, most people seem to think you did very well. I bet Kimber Hutchinson loves the idea of a used car lot. He calls himself a socialist, but holds it against me because I haven't got the right family background or the right education. I think the old dog really hates me. He's not exactly crazy about me, either. He's going all out for the children. He wants formal adoption. Over my dead body? Yes. And Tessa's. And probably Fiona's, too. Billy? Billy, Sally! Come on! Anything. Right, should we go and look at the mint, working on Daddy's new car? Can you get in kids of his own to play with? Oh, don't you start. I get enough of that from my mother. Daddy? <laughs> Good heavens, no. Daddy with a grandson called Kaczynski? I think he quietly hopes, if he's rude enough, poor George will disappear and I'll marry an elderly yappy puppy with a good family name. <laughs> Everything all right with your Gloria? Now, whatever put that idea into your head? Sally was saying, Daddy's got a girlfriend. Well, how could she? They haven't even seen her yet. Well, it's time they did then, isn't it? Little girls are good at guessing that kind of thing. And they also don't like to be left out. You're going to have to tell them, Bernie. Mum is not coming home anymore. Daddy! Daddy, can I start the car? Quite proud of finding that for you, is George. He thinks it suits you. That way. Spoil, spoil. Uncle George says it goes 130. That's even faster than Mummy's. Daddy never drove fast. Mummy says so. Is Mummy coming back for Christmas? But she still loves us, doesn't she? Of course she does. And still loves you, doesn't she? difficult, I know. You mustn't mind if it is. I don't. Evening, Miss Kent. Evening. Oh, kids, uh, this is Gloria. Hello, Billy. Hello, Sally. Night, Dad. Why don't you show Gloria your room? No. Quite right. Uh, it's private, isn't it? I wouldn't want to show anyone my room either. Gloria's going to help me hang up the decorations. That's right. And when you come down tomorrow morning, the Christmas tree will be ready. Will you still be here? No. No, I'll be back in my home. Good night. Good night. Good night. I've never ever done this, you know. You'll have to tonight. You're under observation. We're under observation. Right. Well. Good 
evening, Miss Kent. What do you want? I've got a message for Mr. Sampson. Seems your Mr. Stillies has come up with a last minute Christmas present for you. going to bring me a bunch of flowers. That was six weeks ago. They have been keeping you away from me. Yes. Your methods of debriefing here are very amateur. Six weeks now. And we have only covered routine procedures. Without much stilton and smoked salmon. You said I'd be out by Christmas. I think by Easter I'll be lucky. And this is an attempt to speed things up, is it? What is? I've been given an air ticket. I thought that sent you. Four days before Christmas. For you, Samson. A couple of nights in Berlin. You could go and sing Stille Nacht at the Kaiser Wilhelm Gedächtniskirche. Oh. Play Christmas Spy on Chick Panchami. Who is this target? Private secretary of a junior minister in Bonn. They take advantage of Christmas parties, a passage of documents. It's always a good time of year to move the pieces around the board in Berlin. Instead, of course, you're thinking someone is pushing me around the board. And what if that someone is setting me up for something? Or for someone else? What would you be thinking in my place? 